doing a magic trick. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. Nixon bands game number three. Janair versus Samsung. Nara Sejuani. What else? All right, so Janair on the blue side once again. And Sejuani, so same bands that we saw last time. Yep. Really worked for them. So Janair not going to switch up their band strategy at all. And there's a LeBlanc band. So Callista and Bard are available. There's going to be a Callista for Pilot almost certainly. That is a pretty big pickup early on. Callista Bard is quite a strong lane as yep. well. If you have kill pressure in a lane, Bard can be very good because of that double stun from range, and that'll be a Cassiopeia. Something that has fallen through picks and bands throughout this whole series so far, actually. Yeah, interestingly enough, we have not seen it yet tonight. So we'll see. They don't have to pick the Bard right away. Anything like that. Now, Eve going to take the Rek'Sai here. We don't know whether it's going to Eve or Kuve. Remember that they can still go ahead and take that in Italy and send the Rek'Sai into the top lane if they want to. So uh, jungle choices are getting a little bit more limited for Chaser right here. He was never an Italy player, so he doesn't have that same takeaway power. Where do you go with this pickup? Of course, Lee Sin available for Chaser. If he wants to play Nunu, that could be an option as well. And if they're going to lock in the Azir, you got to think there's going to be a Nunu coming in. And be a fresh pretty good pick. for Sweet. So no Bard. I'm sorry, Doa. They're just playing the I, long game. I told game. you. I they're gave just, up. They're just playing up. the long game. So they, they're not going to play Bard now, Doa, because they're waiting. To sh they're trying to say, we don't prioritize Bard. Why are you guys banning it? And then when they play somebody like SK Telecom, that's when the Bard's going to come out. Yeah, possibly. I'm bitter now. <laughs> Jaded and bitter, bitter about the about lack the of Bard. Bard. Yeah. Well, maybe Samsung will play it for you. I feel betrayed. They probably won't, because they're not running the person who does. <laughs> well, you have to assume there's going to be some crossover. Usually when one player starts to get very good in the past in Korea, one champion, the other player on that same team, we think about Dade's Yasuo really influencing Pond's Yasuo play last year. Oh yeah, definitely. Because that knowledge can be shared quite easily. Are they going to take Evelyn also? And Evelyn then Nami. And then, Maybe. look at that. Wow. So, Evelyn Nami, and that means it is going to be a top lane Rek'Sai. Yeah, I guess so. Something that is very difficult to deal with. Well, this is interesting. We haven't seen a Nami for a very, very long time. Makes me wonder if they're going to play something like Caitlyn. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking, too. Um, I mean, it's it's uh, Samsung likes wow, to push Italy. fast. So. Oh, interesting. So. Jinair actually taking the Nidalee here. This is definitely not oh boy. a Chaser-style pick. And no. there we go. Wow, Varus. Varus okay. as an AD carry. Yeah, it so works. So Varus Nami for that poke. So you, you were going to get something long range with that Nami. Yeah. And that'll be Fury as our first Varus AD carry of this year. Yeah, it has not been a terribly popular pick for a while in Korea, aside from, well, Faker playing it, GBM playing it a little bit in mid lane, but not at ADC. Well, Fury, a uh, very skilled player, so we'll see what kind of ults he has, but the follow-up with the Petrifying Gaze, very good. Yeah. That's going to be their primary form of engagement. If they can hit an Eve ult as well from the flank, it'll make setting up the Chains of Corruption even easier. How he does in lane against Callista, not exactly sure. This is a new matchup that I... Haven't seen before. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, Varus can be a pretty safe laning carry if you choose to play him that way. You can sort of just sit back and farm a bit. Still, uh, low mobility in yeah. that bottom lane, and that's going to mean that Nidalee ganks, if Chaser hits a spear, could be quite deadly. Also pretty vulnerable to getting uh, tossed out of a fight by an Azir as well. Yeah, Chaser has a lot of opportunities. They can get the Maokai route into the Nidalee spear as well in the top side. So really, Chaser should be focusing on the side lanes here while Kuzan just plays that Azir mid, farms up, and they'll be up to Eve to see if he can counter gank this Nidalee at all, bait him into a trap where he all ends with the pounce. And That's right. Well, game three, Jinair versus Samsung. Who takes it? Time to find out.
the dedicated fans remaining in the studio here. Janair versus Samsung, game number three. And, you know, no matter how it ends up, it's it's nice to see Samsung taking games, you know? I mean, oh, yeah. they clearly have issues, but again, like, what a huge improvement for this team in the offseason. And they're not taking games in a really sloppy fashion earlier no. where they were just all inning and rolling the dice. Samsung has a lot of strategic play now that was absent in their spring season. Over the deep boards. Check that out. So Samsung should have a lot of poke, but I'm I'm really worried because both Cassiopeia, Varus, and Varus, their carries, are going to have a hard time dealing with Chaser Spears. There's just not a lot of speed there. If they land, the, the all-in can be pretty devastating. Well, that's the whole thing. If they land, we don't know how good Chaser is on this Nidalee. Yes, that is quite true. Yeah. I mean, really, uh, Eve has been the primary Nidalee player here in Korea. I'm I'm surprised they didn't go for the Nunu, but they they a lot of players don't like the Nunu into Evelyn matchup because it's hard to lock down Eve with the Nunu. And Eve on Eve, the dream. <laughs> Tons of fun. It's happening. It's finally happening, guys. Are we saying the champion name? Are we saying the player name? Who knows? It's for you to decide. Could right. be either. Take take your pick. It's all about what you want it to be. <laughs> all right. A gentle fan. Pilot going to take some poke early from that piercing arrow. And I'm wondering if Fury's going to build that tier first, which yeah. could put him in a pretty weak state against the early game power of Thresh, Callista, and Italy. You know, one thing we haven't talked about, ooh, meanwhile, Aye. action down in the mid lane, Eve going on to Kuzan. Yeah, going for one of those level two ganks, trying to put this rookie player off his game. Yep. And Chaser, ooh, ooh, I oh, love it. Da -da. Da -da. Well, where'd he go? He's Eve. He's Eve. <laughs> you can't see him. Who are you waiting for, Chaser? <laughs> He's going to check out that blue buff, though. Uh, or is he? He's not. Right out of range. Yeah. Unfortunately, for Chaser, thought he was being clever. Didn't even try and throw a spear right there. Instead, he's going to come around. Oh, that was close. Close right there. So Chaser waited for a long time for that, wow, trying sweet. to re react to the level two gank. And Sweet taking a lot of damage down to that bottom side. Yeah, that's one thing we hadn't talked about is that Fury and Nami have a ton of poke in this yes, 2v2. Yeah, it's really good. Between ebb and flow and, uh, and the piercing arrow. It's very annoying, plus the yeah. Nami shield as well. So... But it does put them in a situation where they have to push really far forward. Right. And also, they were level two first, and Callista has a lot of kill pressure, but you need some levels for the additional crowd control in the Thresh to really take full advantage of that. So we're not going to see them really hitting their stride until level three or four. And what will Chaser's time timing be, as he was delayed thanks to his little attempt to take out Eve. That was not so successful. Oh, Fury and Wraith pushing that lane up really fast. Wow, there go the Twin Fangs. So Kuzan struggling a little bit more here in game number three. Well, did have to take the brunt of that punishment earlier and use all his potions, although Crown out of potions as well. Chaser is going to recall, pick up his jungle item. Let's see what upgrade he goes for. Looks like Trailblazer, all right. Yep, just for a bit of, bit of quicker farming. No big surprise there. And a pocket full of wards. That's right. It's a good feeling to have a pocket full of wards. Get a lot of vision out of those. And so, this is pretty much what we're going to be seeing for a while. Yeah, we'll be. Yeah. Until one of these junglers makes a move. Chase are going to pop over right now and start to set up this gank onto Kuve. It is important to keep the Rek'Sai down if you can. Rek'Sai currently at 50% HP. There we go. Yep, okay. right into a nice spear. Kuve in a lot of trouble. Goes oh. not down. Oh, there we go. The spear, sapling, run! <laughs> He's a, oh, okay, <laughs> safe. Wow, Kuve makes it out. Very close. Yeah. But great interrupt on the pounce with the unburrow. 
So Kuve reads that situation, prevents any further damage from going down, and is able to dodge out the spear in the end. Wraith continuing to poke onto Pilot now. Pilot has to use that potion first. So Pilot and Sweet really having a lot of trouble against this Varus lane, and Samsung playing aggressively, knowing that that would be the first pick and having some sort of answer. Oh, nice. Flash play, but there's a slow immediately from Fury. Death Sentence doesn't hit. Fury just gets a bunch of free autos. Here comes Cassiopeia, though. Crown coming down. I don't think they're going to dive that, no. Well, that's an early roam for Cassiopeia, but Cassie went back first. Oh, oh dear. Chaser, they got to body block this. Maybe. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, he tried he... to smite the minion before the spear got there even. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> He messed up that combo a little yeah. bit. May have been able to get a kill if he had actually hit that smite first before the spear did, but. It was a nice try. Yeah, they burned the summoner heal too. Chaser really falling behind in terms of farm now. He's a level down and 10 CS, so Eve just power farming his way through the jungle while Chaser has a couple of back-to-back -back unsuccessful ganks. Didn't even get a flash out of Wraith. And a lot of summoners used before that little scuffle started from Pilot and Sweet. Well, they got the heal and they got the exhaust, at least, so a couple summoners. Yeah, Chaser's ganks have been almost successful, which means they failed. <laughs> oh, that's a nice slow on to Pilot from Fury. The old arrow's doing a lot of work right there. Yep. The nice thing about Varus, too, is that he's not, he's not so much of a mana hog, so you can really Harass a lot. Yeah, and lane. where I, it really depends on where Fury goes with this. He's probably not going to get tier because that would put him in a super dangerous situation when Pilot goes back to get BF Sword. Yeah. Uh, trying to stack that up. So I assume we're going to see an Infinity Edge here first onto Varus in these particular circumstances. And Sweet so get a walk into a ward right there. Pilot not wanting to go back yet. Eve in the river. They bait this one out. Ooh. Maybe, maybe they have here. Wraith coming in with the ebb and flow. There's Aqua Prison on to Sweet. It's going to play Eve away. Yeah, Teleport comes down, but First Blood goes to Eve anyway. Teleport canceled. Cuvé not needed down there. And he's got Void Rush, so if he puts some tunnels down, he can move around the map pretty easily anyway. Yeah, he can always get back to lane. Chaser going to use this opportunity yeah. to take away the red buff. But there's that First Blood. And it's not on to the Callista. And Callista, if she doesn't get kills in lane, does not take over games in the same way that a lot of other AD carries do. She's mostly used as a lane bully and for her objective control. But you want to get a kill or two in the Callista lane before the mid game, just right out of the laning phase, or else you can have some troubles. Kuve just Ooh. going to use his long network of tunnels to escape a potentially hazardous situation. Well, not bad. Samsung, meanwhile, taking the dragon down in bot lane, too. The river. Very nice. So good early lead there for Samsung, a dragon, yeah, very nice. first blood. Things going pretty well. Nice little CS lead for Fury as well. And Chaser just not being able to convert on some of these ganks. Has that yeah. tier now. Maybe a little bit overly bold to take this Nidalee when it's not a champion that we really associate with this particular player. Now, Trace has gotten a nice CS lead over Kuve because of all the pressure coming into that top lane. But ultimately, in the end, it's fairly minor. All right, then. Yep. It looks like it will be probably the Infinity Edge for Fury. He did pick up that BF Sword on the way back. Pilot got his as well, too, so not really too behind as far as damage goes but returning to lane with no pots, so he's gonna need to be careful. Yeah, Trace really starting to grow a lead here, even if those ganks weren't actually successful. Oh, oh nice, nice grab. grab on the Wraith. Wow, there's a play as well to exhaust on the pilot immediately. There are the chains, and Eve comes in for an easy kill. Looks like it's going to be two going to Samsung. Fury picks one up as well. That worked out pretty perfectly for Samsung. Well, just the setup on the chain right there was yeah. so quick, and a little bit of a missed timing. Chaser not there, whereas Eve in the mix immediately to pick that up. Two more kills. That's a huge lead on a Callista lane and showing the power of the Varus and the Nami here. Two champions we rarely see anymore, but being used a devastating effect against this Callista and the Thresh. Well, yeah, I mean, between the, the passive 
from the W on uh, Varus between the Tide Collar's blessing damage that that uh, Nami gives you, plus the ebb and flow bouncing around. Like, that's a lot of burst coming out of that lane. And here comes Wraith. They really want to focus down this turret. Eve there just to make sure that Crown is safe as he continues to auto. But Kuzan, ever since that level 2 gank, really hasn't been able to stave off the Cassiopeia. And a lot of chip damage going down onto these towers as well. So this is a lot of gold that can open up here. Trace has to be the savior out of this top lane. And the Varus, he will drop off in terms of damage in the late game since he's primarily a poke champion. But he still has great initiation. And they're balancing it out with the Cassiopeia for late game damage. And they also have that big split push. Trace has a CS edge. He already has some sustain as well as with the Catalyst as well as the Cloth Armor. But that is still going to be a handful for him in the top side, especially if Kuve does that Black Cleaver build that he did the first time he played the top lane Rek'Sai. Still late game team fighting, even with the Cassiopeia, a little bit on the weaker side for Samsung. So it's a game that Jin Air, with how much late game power they have on the Maokai and the Azir, may be able to pull out despite this deficit, but Samsung definitely getting the ball rolling early. Yeah, it really is something that they need to continue rolling, though, because if they slow down at all, they might get overwhelmed in the late game, like you mentioned. But a good start so far. Nice little almost 2,000 gold lead for Samsung coming into the early, early stages of the mid game. And so far, this Varus looking really good, and here comes Eve again, really trying to punish this bot lane. Now, the summoners are up for Jynair, so it's not going to be as easy this time around, but Again, with a good ult from here, from Fury, might be able to make something happen. Italy's back, yep. looking for the counter gank. But again, Eve really focusing on the bottom side and punishing the aggression. They know they want the kills onto Callista now. There we go. Oh, Miss. the chain's missed. Wow. And Callista pulls him right out, going to throw him in. Onto Nami. Nami turning around. Fury taking a lot of damage. Trace gets the kill there. Pilot comes in. Gets eliminated as well. Jin Air trying to turn this one around. Trace running interference here. Samsung fighting without their AD carry. They're going to be pushed back slowly. Actually, both ADs down here. Comes Exhaust Azir. on the chaser. Yep, Kuzan comes in finally. Eve goes low. Kuzan gets a kill there as well. Trace fighting for his life against Kuve. They're actually going to bring Kuzan back into the back lines. Nice. Oh, and the slow lantern. Drums. That's on right. to Kuzan to get him out of that situation. So a favorable trade there. Crown not getting a, a good ultimate with Cassiopeia there. Well, yeah, because they disengaged as soon as they saw it. Uh, Kuzan yep. came in, got the kill, and then was lanterned out so they could avoid the petrifying gaze. They're moving into the jungle. A pass over a pink ward, seeing what they can get. Varus, in the meantime, making a beeline for the mid lane, which is already chipped down. He wants to get a turret if he can. Look, he already bought the Berserker's Grief for that little bit of attack speed so he can try and take down the mid turret quickly. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't lead off with uh, with Tidal Wave there because it seems like it'd be a much easier way to set up that Chains of Corruption rather than flashing for it, you know? Yeah. I'm a little bit surprised about the way they engaged that fight. I think they, think they did it the hard way. Still, if you don't have... Tidal Wave is still, unfortunately, both of those are abilities are really best as a secondary engage tool. I mean, it's it's one to set up the other, right? So the Tidal Wave goes across diagonally and it pushes Sweet and Pilot forward a little bit right into the chains. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a replay of that so we can see if there was a, a better play to be made there. I didn't catch it the first time around, but they get the mid lane turret, absolutely huge. So Samsung figures out a way to take that skirmish in the bottom lane and just immediately turn it into more global gold for themselves. And I love how Samsung has been turning into this team that plays early towers so well. Yeah, it's something we haven't seen in Korea for a while. And they found a, a way to do it that seems to work for them. At least it works for them once per match anyway. Trace moving down to the bottom side. There comes the Void Rush from Kuve directly to that tunnel that was left up in the bottom side. They can't really do anything about this dragon. Well, second dragon taken by Samsung. There's a tidal wave in the chains on the pilot. Oh, man, the auto doesn't quite finish him off. That was close. Yeah, lanterning him out. Ooh. Two ults used right there to not pick up that kill, but they're going to get a tower for it more than likely. Chaser 
trying to auto, but a lot of members of Samsung immediately heading back. But I think the turret's going to go this. down in favor of Samsung and yeah, Bot. Fury just, again, having his way with these early turrets. Yep, no issues here. And Crown able to push back that mid lane now. So Samsung continues to maintain a little bit of a lead and maybe even grow it a little bit. What I like so much about Fury as a player is that he is a great AD carry. Uh, definitely very talented mechanically, does well in team fights, typically carries his team in that fashion, but he also doesn't necessarily prioritize farm. He does happen to be 60 CS up ahead in this game. That helps. Uh, due to the poke and the zoning they were a Wraith and he were able to do in their aggressive play. But he'll just leave and continue to push down turrets. He moves between lanes so quickly. He knows where he needs to be to apply the pressure on the map. Yeah, very true. Finishing that Infinity Edge now, too, which uh, puts him considerably ahead in, in terms of power over Pilot, because I don't think Pilot's got enough. Looks like he's going to go for the BF, the uh, Bloodthirster first, rather. No, now anyway. Trace does have a finished Frozen Heart, and hmm. that's going to be efficient as long as he stays in the side lanes and doesn't have to deal with Crown for a while. So the right priority there, just going Catalyst straight into Frozen Heart, seeing what he had to deal with in his lane, as well as the incoming Fury after that Bottom turret was going down because he knew it was slowly getting chipped. Eve going Warrior Enchant into Sheen. Super aggressive wow. Evelyn build here. Yeah. That is going to fall off very hard in the late game. Samsung knows they have to hit this timing now to get these outer turrets down, and they're going to invest heavily to do that and continue to snowball. I'm putting the ward down just to say save. The trace is still Look lurking clever. in the brush. Oh, now they see him. It's going to be a 4v3. They have to get out. Flash is used already. There's a tidal wave. Try to disengage, but Fury already hit with that death sentence. It was too late. Clever. That tidal wave was, I think, a little bit late coming out of Wraith there. And that's the predictability of Samsung coming into play. Yep. Because you know when that tower goes down, Fury's not going to go back to the bottom side. They're going to try and make a play top immediately. Kuve starting to split push, however. Trace should be able to get back in time to save this turret. Kuve has that phage, so he's going into the split push build with the Black Cleaver, but now Jyn Air may be able to answer this turret here. Nope. Kuve gonna come right back up to the top side to save it, but this will give Maokai a lot of free farm in the bottom. Yeah, and uh, he's already pretty close anyway, so might even be a little bit of a lead for Trace after that. And meanwhile, Samsung not really too deterred. Crown pushing a little bit into the enemy jungle. They're getting some decent wards down, actually, to help them take out this final outer turret here. Vision-wise, they're setting themselves up quite nicely to do that. Yeah, Kuve can teleport to bottom if he wants to, but that could set up Trace for another nice play as Varus pushes out. Varus will have Flash this time. There was a very nice timing from Janair where they went on to Fury before, right before his Flash came up in that last engagement. Yeah, very true. For now, Pilot trying his best to defend this turret. <laughs> Gets it with an air over there. Comes Eve again. Eve loves being in Fury's lane at all times. Always assume that Eve is there. Yeah, you do kind of have to. Samsung kind of slowing down for the moment here. And Fury's arrows have been very, very good this game. Certainly have been. Good accuracy. It's just wow. another one. Yeah. Such a satisfying feeling to hit those two. Taking out a Sentinel, meanwhile. Wraith just hanging back in the pink warded brush, making it look like they don't want to shove quite as hard this top side that perhaps he could be going down or warding towards the bottom side of the map. Minute 30 till Dragon. And at that point, Sam's gonna, Samsung's gonna have to seriously consider whether they want this top tower enough. It has taken hardly any damage at this point. I feel like Dragon should be the priority, shouldn't it? I mean, they've already got two. The, yeah. the potential to go up 3-0 on Dragons is pretty important. Absolutely is. More important than that top turret right now, anyway, it would seem. Eve is just so squishy. <laughs> yep. He can't really team fight with this build particularly well because he can get 100 to 0 to the instant, especially if he gets W'd by Maokai. That is not going to be pretty for him. He will take one burst, and that'll be it. Finally. Got some Merc Treads, has a Ruby Crystal right now, but pretty delayed tankiness build. 
And this is where I start to wonder what the what this gene's going to turn into. Because there's an outside shot this is going to be a Trinity Force right now. Hmm. It would be unlikely, but possible. Oh, Rafe. Oh, Rafe gets caught. There's a nice Aqua Prison on the Chaser, though. Oh, the Spear! Oh, no. Was it worth it? Was it worth it, Wraith? No, it wasn't. It wasn't worth it. Not with he the dragon coming up in 20 seconds. He got the Aqua Prison there, but then stuck around for a heartbeat too long. Well, his health was so low. I mean, I don't really know what sort of follow-up he was expecting out of that. Uh, is Kuwait going to take top tower, though, is the question. No, not quite. Not quite. Close. Very close. Well, Dragon's up. We'll see if Samsung can delay things long enough for Wraith to get back because they really need him for this. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. No. Uh, we'll see what the poke is like from Theory. That could actually change things. Well, can they get through the choke, though, is the question against this Azir who can just wall no. that off. Chase are going to take it. So that is a very crucial delay. Also, Trace not having to TP out of the top side means yeah. the awkward interactions with Unburrow and Twisted Advance right there. <laughs> But Trace having a hard time holding in the Rek'Sai at this point, in spite of already having Ninja Tab and a frozen heart. This is how brutal this Rek'Sai is. And Rek'Sai doesn't even have the armor penetration yet from the, the Black Cleaver, the stacks, or the armor shred, rather. No, it's just Rex Rek'Sai. Now the Sturt should go down. No one up here to save it, so Kube yep. is just going to punch it in spite of Trace. And that is some more gold there. They're trying to follow up with. Are they stuck? Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, they're trying to. He's trying to buy time for Chaser to get up there, but Chaser way too far away to complete that roam into the top side. And they're just gonna have to be happy with handing the blue buff over to Kuzan. Man, Pilot is so far behind now. Yeah, it's gonna be hard for this Kuz to ever do any to uh, ever do any damage. And even though Janair got that dragon, they still have lost all their outer turrets. And they have zero themselves. Yeah. The flip side of this is that entire gold lead is coming from turrets, pretty much, from Samsung. So, if they can knock down those outers in return without losing any more, they're going to be in a good place just to even up Whoa. early. That is a fast Baron, and I mean, it will be uh, going down really quickly. They've got the ability to take it out fast, and yep. they're going to get nice it. Nice play. Very nice Smart play. Smart play from Samsung. The, blend, or the, the orb comes in too late. They have Black Cleaver. They have Cassiopeia. They have the they have the Eve with the Warrior Enchant in the Sheen. That Baron died so fast. Yeah. Very good timing for Samsung. And it was right after the Black Cleaver came up, too. So they go back, buy their items, make an attempt onto the Baron, take it out nearly instantaneously before Janair can react, and that's it. So the question is, do, is Samsung as polished on some of these other compositions? This one's looking really good as well. It does. They had a plan for the, they had a plan for the Callista, and they played it out, Eve in the right place at the right time, putting Chaser on a pick in this Nidalee that he wasn't able to have success on those early ganks. And now Kuve is split pushing the bot lane again as Eve comes in to take a little bit of vision back. And this is so nasty too, because having the Rek'Sai now with the Black Cleaver power spike in a split pushing position is great yeah. for Samsung. Wow, and if Samsung beats Jyn'Air, that just throws the entire rankings <laughs> out of whack, doesn't it? <laughs> Does make a quite interesting scenario. Janair would fall to two and two. Wow, Kuve is just going to take this turret. Nothing stopping him. No, you him. can't do anything about this. This is why top lane Rek'Sai is so good. This is why Janair was banning Rek'Sai and first picking it earlier in this series. But they got baited into the Callista trap. Yeah. And they didn't take. They were in a weird situation because in pick and ban, you know Eve plays Nidalee quite well. So do you try and do you? You know they're going to take it even if you take the Evelyn early in the draft. So, do you try and take it away yourself? No, instead Samsung responds with an E pick of their own, forces Chaser onto Nidalee. And now we're here. <laughs> yep, Nidalee is not working out terribly well for Chaser. He's been doing okay, but can't stop these turrets from going down, and that's kind of the important thing. There was not oh, enough wave wow. clear. Kuve just going for another one. No, no. Nobody coming down you to can't, help. You literally can't do anything about this. This cannon minion's going to sit you, there all day. You can't 1v1 this Rek'Sai. There's, there's nothing you can do. 
You just sit there, oh wait, Kube's gonna go underground and heal himself up again and then get another Baron empowered wave. You have to send two people. Doesn't look like they're willing to commit that yet. I mean, as soon as somebody else moves down to that bot lane, they're gonna lose something in yep. top or mid. No, this is a this is a perfect situation for Samsung. This is how you snowball out this comp. They're they're playing it very well. Yeah. Kube just doing a little bit of damage. All he needs to do is walk up and hit the turret though. Wow, actually getting Trace extremely low. Can't do anything? Nope. Trace doesn't even have home guards yet. You better have enough money to get them right now or that inhibitor turret is dead. There we go. Meanwhile, the tier two in top lane goes down. Trace comes back. He's scared, but now he sees some more people in the mid lane, so he's just gonna keep punching that turret. Yeah, he'll get it right about now. Yep. Jeez. There we go. And Kube can just walk out. Oh, Samsung really making it look easy at this point. Because it is for them. <laughs> it really, really is. Kube is so good at this top Rek'Sai. He knows exactly what his limits are on the split push. Yeah, it really seems that way. And they're limitless. <laughs> There we go, crown back now. Starting to build into a Luden's Echo, would appear. Yeah, it looks Getting that, that splash damage and then heading right over for Dragon, going to hit it on the money for number three. And Rek'Sai back at the top side now. Damn, Kuve's annoying. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And he can get back to that Dragon pretty much any time they need him as well. He's got a tunnel over by the bot lane. So, let's talk. Over, okay. under on Zion Spartan using Rek'Sai in CLG's next game. I don't know, pretty good? <laughs> I don't have him on my fantasy team, so I haven't been paying attention. Just a uh, player who loves to split push, so it seems like this is a strategy that'd be right up his alley. Well, Dragon number three going down to Samsung. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dragon. And hello, massive lead for Samsung, and hello, possible defeat of a top four team by Samsung. Well, this is, uh, I'm, I'm happy to see Samsung actually have something else left here. Yes, it's something that they've shown us before in the top lane rec side, but they've got, they've got some depth to their comps now, and the Fury is so good that you really have to start thinking about how you're going to contain him. Yeah because he manages to pull out the Varus and make it work against the Kalista, and they get everything they want out of this draft. Absolutely everything. He's played it out very well. They're gonna grab Kube, finally, everybody going in onto this Rek'Sai. He actually missed going through his tunnel, got pulled back out again. Kube in a bit of trouble. Chaser picks up the kill there, so finally, three members of Jin Air getting together <laughs> to take down Kube. Only well, took three people, you know, whatever. Yep. And meanwhile, the other lanes are pushing up as well. Baron up in a minute, 20. Kube has the thorn mail for good measure. Now the downside to the Rek'Sai is that the Rek'Sai is really terrible as a top laner in 5v5 fights. Great in terms of split pushing, but offers so little compared to something like Maokai when you come to the damage reduction from his ultimate and uh, of course his sustain without having to go underground so he can keep dealing damage uh, while sustaining in a team fight with his passive. And of course he just has a lot more crowd control effects, so. Right. That, that late game is probably not going to be reached by Jyn Air here, considering the massive gold deficit, but that's how you have to, to beat it. You have to figure out how you're going to contain the, the Rek'Sai in the early game and stop him from taking all your turrets, which is something, a, a conundrum not yet solved by, by Jyn Air. Yeah, apparently. Six to zero would seem to, uh, seem to substantiate that claim. Oh, well, another slow, grindy finish for this one. No, not so slow. I mean, we already have an open inhibitor at 29 minutes. We've had one for a while. Another grindy yeah. finish for this game. It's like when he hit Nami with a spear, it like forced a bubble out. I don't know. Just uh, she spurts She's bubbles. sprung a leak. Oh, oh, wow. 
wow, that works. Well, you can just get a little bit of health back pretty easily. And look, is it Baron time? The Sentinel fleet, the Sentinel armada here in the jungle, just making sure that they prevent any further Barons from going down. They do kind of need Kuve up there for this Baron. Yeah, they do. Luckily, he's got a tunnel in the Baron pit. Ooh, here we go. Coming in now, Eve coming from the side. There's a nice tidal wave. They lock up sweet. Good Aqua Prison as well, too. Can they finish him off? It looks like they can. Trace running through there now, and Fury giving chase. A lot of damage coming in from the Twin Fangs as well. Jynair turning around on this one, but Samsung says, all right, we've got the support. We they can go back and just start baiting again. Three ults on that, though, so they have to be actually very careful in taking this Baron. Uh, of course, Crown trying to position himself for a Petrifying Gaze if they come in through that choke point, but the poke is there. Yep, that's right. Azir actually doing a lot of damage to Crown here. He's got to hide back behind the pit trace, looking to go in there. They do take the Baron anyway, but that's a lot of damage onto Samsung. Can Jin Air take people out? Maokai getting the back lines. Eve having to escape over the wall. And Samsung getting absolutely destroyed in that team fight. That and now the turrets are going to go down, oh which boy. is going to cause a massive gold swing here for Jin Air. And that's why it's so dangerous. You don't have a very tanky team. And you had already dropped your chain of corruption and your tidal wave. So how do you disengage from this? When the Maokai oh, comes in, look nobody. at this damage coming in after the Baron Shred. Pop, everybody goes down, and you're dealing with Poke coming in from the side, and no way to escape. Crown had so a, dangerous. Well, Crown had like one of Are the they worst Cassia B ults I've ever seen. Uh, it appears that they're going to come close. I think they will. Are they going to go for it? Is the question. Looks like they are. Wow, Jin Air, that's a huge turnaround. Yeah. They have the lantern to get out safely. So Jin Air closes the gold gap to within 5k, despite being down two barons in this game. Yep. Oh, Rek'Sai uh, going in. Oh, he's not. I thought he was going to try to backdoor that inhibitor. Yeah, but they're going to try to they flank fight. instead. They, they're not in a position to fight, though. He can't do this. He's actually going to get seen right here. This uh, is good. They're going to do it. it. Well, smites the red buff. <laughs> nice well, parting right. red buff take as they continue to kite through. All right. Oh, Chaser. It's delayed for the moment. I thought he was going to try to go and take the inhibitor or something. Well, there goes a tier two. So we'll see how slowed down Samsung is after all this. Eve still has the Baron buff, so he, if he kind of moves between lanes and buffs some minions, they can still put some pressure on, I suppose. So it's still going to be pretty hard yeah. because here, here's the thing. They they need to be able to split push with the Rex side. They can't group this five. That's not really the position they want to be in right now. Well, it's a bit awkward. You know, I think a big part of that, too, is at the beginning of that fight, Crown flashed over the wall and ulted absolutely nobody. Oh, that's really rough. That definitely would have changed things. Yeah. Yeah, huge, huge miss there. All right. So, Dragon going to be contested. Jin Air wants to get that poke in first. Eve setting up for a flank. Pilot not there. They see Pilot with a ward, so they're going to try it all in this Dragon before he can actually reach his destination. Lantern is down. Eve potentially coming in from behind too. They might try for another uh, but flank But they have a pink here. ward here, so That's I think true. they'll be able they'll to see, see him. him. But will they see him soon enough though? Chains come in onto Trace. Here comes Eve in the back lines. They put down the box. Tidal Wave doesn't hit anybody. Wraith gets taken out by Kuzan immediately. There goes Eve and Jynair turning around this fight again. And here we go. Now Maokai getting in the back lines all over Fury. Fury with a nice piercing arrow through the middle of everything. And Jynair taking a lot of damage, but in the end, it's going to be Jynair with the ace, just barely. Can they finish this game? They have the Azir. And wow, there is Chaser right there. He's not alive at the moment. Trace has no TP, so he can't go back. They're going to try and finish. I guess so. They've got super minions. They have Azir with his sand soldiers to kill the turrets. That's true. There's it's going to do a lot of damage. It's going to be, uh, it's probably not going to be close, actually. They actually, should be able to finish this one. And I that is the can. danger. You can't fight 5v5 with this composition. Even with that kind of lead. Don't worry, man. Nami's got this. Oh, that's a heartbreaker no. for Samsung. Oh, they came They're so close. They're trying to defend. Well, Eve is there. He might be able to kill him the sweep, but I don't think that Nexus is going to survive. Kuzan trying to do his best expect impression here. Oh, one or two more. Oh, man. Oh, oh the Nexus gets taken out at the last second. And Jin Air. Wow. <laughs> 
Takes a pretty unlikely 2-1 in this best of three. Well, wow. that was some good poise by Jin Air to come back. I suppose. And to force those fights. They really pulled that one out of the fire, didn't they? Samsung fell apart Man. at the end of that one. No they kidding. really did. They forgot their win conditions, and they had that naked inhibitor that they could have just repeatedly pressured until the end of time. But instead, they decided to take fights. And you, you just have to remember, be very crystal clear, yeah. top lane Rek'Sai is not for team fighting. <laughs> Well, still improvement from Samsung, and clearly have some things to tighten up, obviously, but overall a strong showing against arguably one of the better teams in the tournament. Sa I'm, I actually am very impressed with Samsung. That yeah. They've been able to come into this season and actually give teams like the Koo Tigers and Genera a run for their money. Pretty solid debut by uh, Kuzana and Genera, too. Yeah. And Trace actually did the most damage to champions out of anybody in that game. Wow, don't see that all often.